everyone what's up my name is Kay and today I'm gonna to be talking about things that I've trained my guide dog to do so if you don't know I have a seeing eye dog so he's a guide dog from the seeing eye and so he was trained by their program to you know do things like guide work um, obviously but there were some extra things that I wanted him to learn how to do that he was not taught at the seeing eye so today I'm just gonna be telling you guys what those things are Zena, forward. Okay, so there are five things that I trained him to do that he did not learn at the seeing eye or he did not learn to my standards at the seeing eye, but first I'm going to start with my zero with thing on my list of five, um, which is targeting. So at the seeing eye he learned to target um, whatever I wanted him to target basically and I learned how to teach him to target things and so I continued doing that when we came home to teach him to target new objects. So what this means is that like I could teach him, okay, I need you to find this trash can for me or this um, pole with a button on it for like crossing the street or like whatever thing, a doorknob. Um, so I continued doing that with him once we came home from the seeing eye. So I taught him to target new things, but I didn't like, targeting wasn't a new skill because that's something he learned at the seeing eye. So I'm kind of counting that, I don't know, I'm counting it as the zero thing because like, he learned it at the seeing eye, but we trained it for new things outside of the seeing eye. So. I don't really know what to call it, but okay, now into the, like the actual things that he d did not really do with the seeing eye that I taught him. Okay, so I waited a couple of months between getting him at the seeing eye and starting training these things. Because I, well, first of all, he's my first dog. I didn't really know what I was doing with training, but also I kind of wanted to just like work on our bond and work on him doing like the things that I needed him to do before I added extras. Um, but anyway, once we started training new things, the first thing that I taught him was how to give paw. So just like, I asked him to sit and put my hand out, he would put his paw in my hand. Um, kind of self-explanatory. That was just a really easy thing to train and so I thought it would be a good place to start. And I like having him know this skill because when we're greeting people off harness, um, especially kids, it's just kind of a cute thing to do to like, you know, be like, okay, I'll have him sit, you put out your hand and he can give a paw and it's just like a fun little interaction you can have with someone. Obviously he wouldn't do that while he's working, but when he's off duty and like around family or whatever, it's like just a fun little thing to have him be able to do. <laughs> Alright, thing two is hind end awareness. I don't know if they did this at the seeing eye or not, but based on um, the way that he like acted, I would guess not because he didn't seem like he had good hind end awareness when I got him. Um, it, it didn't cause any problems, like he could guide just fine without it. But I just kind of think that it's something, like I just think it's a skill that every dog should have to like know how to use their body. So I started off by teaching him how to walk backwards. And then once he mastered that, I like transferred it to him healing next to me, walking backwards and forwards. So he can heal like walking forwards and backwards um, just fine now. Also we did work um, with a stool to like kind of the classic thing you picture when you think of hind end awareness like he was standing on the stool and you know with his front paws and his back paws were going around the stool um to like teach him to use his back paws to move around i think this is a really good skill for him to have i see him use it just like in his everyday life of like if a toy gets stuck in a corner he can go in and get it and then back out um honestly this might be a little over dramatic of me but i think this might have saved his life <laughs> like literally um if you don't know i think i might have talked about it before i don't really remember but he was attacked um like maybe six months after i got him um we were walking through campus and a dog ran out of a frat it was um, a bernese mountain dog ran out of a frat and attacked him we were not at the frat we were not like on their property or anything um i have dog hair in my mouth um, we were not like going to the frat, we were not at the frat, we were just walking on a pathway like that was near the frat, but like we were not there. Anyway, the dog ran out and attacked him and the way that it went down was that um, I was standing on one side, the dog that was attacking was on the other side and Zenith was in the middle of us. And the dogs were like parallel, again like with me on one side, so Zenith was kind of trapped in a sandwich between me and the dog that was attacking him. And Zenith and the dog that were attacking him were parallel with their heads on the same side and their butts on the same side. And the dog was going at Zenith's neck. 
and Zenith just walked backwards. And the other dog did not have good hind end awareness, and so when Zenith walked backwards, the other dog could not just walk backwards and keep attacking his neck. Um, so Zenith walked back, and then the other dog was like stumbling, trying to turn, and couldn't really figure out how to get back to Zenith's neck quickly enough, and so Zenith just kept going backwards, and this dog just kept like not knowing what to do, and in that amount of time, like Zenith was kind of able to stall the attack enough that we were able to get the other dog off of him. So I don't know, I'm super glad that I taught him hind end awareness. Um, it might have saved his life, that's probably over dramatic to say that. That's definitely not why I taught it to him, I didn't like think that would ever happen, that thought never crossed my mind, but when it did happen, I was really glad that he had that skill. Um, but the real reason why I taught him hind end awareness was to improve his healing, um, in addition to just like him being able to use his body. And so thing number three on our list is healing. So he did learn how to heal at the seeing eye, definitely, but I don't know if you can hear, he's over there, he has an itch right now. He's scratching his ears, but anyway, um, he did learn how to heal at the seeing eye, but his heal was not like great, and that's, I don't know, I don't want to say that's like any fault of the seeing eyes, I think it's mostly because he really never heals, like he's always either on harness working, or he's lounging around our house, like there's not much in between time where he's like nicely healing, because realistically if I'm walking somewhere out of our house, like he's working, guiding me, you know, um, but once like at first when I moved into my dorm at college he needed to guide me everywhere all the time because I didn't know my way around our dorm it was you know a new building I had never been in before so I needed him to guide me but after I had lived there for a few months and like I learned the layout of the building I was in a very small dorm like I don't know it wasn't that hard to get around once I knew the layout and knew where steps were and where like, I don't know, I just like knew where I was going. Um, kind of the same as how I don't need him to guide me around my own house at home because like I know how to get around my house. Um, my dorm room like turned into kind of that. And so I would usually have him off harness with me like when he was, like when we were just around the dorm like studying with friends in a lounge or anything like that. And so he would be off harness but on leash and he would still need to like behave like a service dog because you know, like he's out kind of in public, like in our dorm. And so for that, I really needed to teach him how to heal like really well, um, just so that he could heal around the dorm with me and like, you know, be under control on leash. So the third thing I trained him how to do was to heal. Okay, I'm back, care battery has changed. I think we're all good. So anyway, as I said, the third thing that I trained him how to do was like healing and loosely walking. Um, but anyway, moving on, the fourth thing I trained him to do was deep pressure therapy or DPT. And this is a very common service dog task. It's used for a bunch of different things, both like physical and psychiatric. Um, for me, I have a lot of chronic illnesses. Well, maybe not a lot. I have a few chronic illnesses and I've been having, I don't know, like health problems kind of a lot. It's been getting worse. Um, and, but I don't know, I have like good patches and bad patches, but like, I don't know, I don't really want to get into it. But um, one of the things that my health problems cause are um, like a lot of GI stuff. And um, I went through a patch, it was a few months, the end of my freshman year, where I was so nauseous all the time, like to a point where I just like couldn't function, I couldn't like get out of bed, I was so bad. And the way that it happened for me was that it was always like late at night. And so it wasn't that big of a deal because when I started feeling super nauseous, I would just like go to bed and then I'd wake up the next day feeling mostly fine. But it became a problem because I'm a night showerer and um, I would just feel so sick. Like I literally could not do anything other than go to bed. And but I got to a point where like I needed to shower, so I had to figure something out. And I had heard about deep pressure therapy, and I was like, all right, I don't think this is like a cure for nausea, but it looks really easy to train, so I'm just gonna like try it. Um, and it actually worked pretty well. I don't know if it was like a placebo or if it actually worked. I think it worked though. Um, when I would get really nauseous, I would just sit down on the floor and have him do deep pressure therapy on my legs and um, just a few minutes of that would get me feeling well enough that I would be able to go take a quick shower. It didn't like cure me or make everything go away, but it made me feel a lot better and like it helped me be able to function more. So 
I trained him to do that and I'm really glad that I did. It's something that I'm keeping up with him even though I haven't really needed it that much since then. Okay, last thing, number five, um, I trained him to do retrievals and that's something that we're actually like still working on. He's not perfect yet, but he's pretty good. Um, and a problem that I had a lot at school was that it would be really windy and my hat would like blow away and then I couldn't find it because like I'm blind and so I can't like see where it is and so it was just like very hard and annoying like whenever that would happen and so I wanted to teach him to do retrievals so that I could just tell him to go get it for me and so that's what we're working on right now he's gotten pretty good at it um, but he still has some room for improvement um, but yeah that's the last thing I taught him to do that's probably the hardest thing on this list that I taught him to do it took a lot of time and patience and it still isn't perfect um, but we're working on it um, yeah, so like those are the things that I taught him how to do. Um, I hope it was helpful for you to like hear the things that I taught him to maybe give you ideas of things you could work on with your dog. Um, I don't think any of these things are like necessary. Like you could not train your dog to do any of these things and like it would be fine. Um, but I enjoy doing it. I think it's really fun to train dogs. I think it was really good for our bond. He loves being trained so much. Like he's so happy when he's like being trained. So um, it's just a fun activity for us to do together. And these are things that are more like useful um, and serve a purpose. So I like training him to do things that serve like an actual purpose as opposed to like things that just like look cute. Um, but I mean, either sign. Um, also, obviously this wasn't like a training video. Like I'm not teaching you how to train things. Um, I guess you can let me know if you want me to do one, but honestly, like, I'm not a professional trainer. This is my first dog. Like, I'm not an expert. I do not feel qualified to make a training video. I think, though, in the description, I'm going to leave links to the videos that I use to train him because I literally just learned how to train dogs by watching YouTube videos. So I can link the videos that I use to, like, learn these specific things with him so you guys can watch them and teach your dogs to do the same things if you want to. But anyway, I hope this was helpful for you guys if you're interested in, like, training your dogs to do more things. Um, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!